Hey there, everybody. Hope you're doing good. It's me, the Crike Man, and it's my live stream. How you doing? Hi, welcome. Ah, big stretch. Walrus King Dev, thank you for 28 months. Constellation Butter, thank you for the four. Welcome, everybody. Let me turn on this dev alerts real quick. Um, yeah, this, uh, so this is a stream where I didn't really have anything planned. And, you know, I figure we can figure out what we want to do today. But mainly, like, I feel like we we don't really just chat, you know? I don't really chat with chat. Chat's a, a, a concept that runs in the background. And occasionally I'll read out a message and I'll, I'll yell at you guys. But that's about it, you know? We don't really, uh, we don't just freaking talk to one another. So, yeah, I am, uh... I'm curious to hear, you know, what's up with you guys and, and I don't know, just kind of like get an idea for where we're both at and what we want to do on this channel, just like in the near future. Um, I've been, I've been making, here, let me, I'll put you guys on screen. Um, hi everybody. Uh, Bromson, thank you for the two year resub as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's I've I've been kind of going through like a a strange uh kind of mental funk I think recently for a variety of reasons, but one of them I think has just been like being really tired. <laughs> uh I've been making uh content online for like 14 years, you know? Um which as a 28-year-old, that makes it half of my adult life. Um or life in general, really actually. And uh yeah, I I feel like, you know, I've kind of gotten comfortable in like a rhythm of like doing what I'm doing. So I'm trying to figure out uh, how to keep it fresh and how to stay excited. And, you know, I figure making you guys part of that conversation um, would be better than not. And then that way we can figure out what we're like, you know, what we enjoy doing together. And that way we can make things Fun, you know? Have you tried edging? Um, no, haven't haven't uh haven't tried that. Um I'm assuming in this context that just means going to the, the start stream button and uh hovering over it and deciding whether or not to stream. Actually in, in that case I have done that quite a lot. <laughs> I think as any streamers are. Battle Brothers. That's all right. You see, already we're off to a good start. Let's get a Let's get a freaking notepad going of like things you guys either have enjoyed the most in the past or things that you'd be excited to see in the future. Um, I I think because I do like a variety of stream stuff. Shane, 81 year resub. Wow. I can't believe we're that old. Thank you for the resub, buddy. Um, yeah, no, I think what is helpful to someone that does like variety streaming as a career uh, is kind of realizing like what the common thread is for everything. Cause I play fucking anything. And I think, you know, it's freeing in that way, but it's also like, man, you know, it, I, I don't know what it's like for the viewers to like go from Pokemon one day to fucking uh, like smite the next or um, I don't know. XCOM or Darkest Dungeon or uh, Stellaris. Like, we're really kind of all over the fucking board, right? So, um, I don't know. I just, I, I kind of wanted to talk and kind of hear what you guys all had to say about what it is that, like, makes, you know, this a place you like hanging out in. Um, and then, you know, I can, I can kind of ruminate on that because I think trying to figure out for myself what people like about this stream can get difficult, right? Cause you're, you're not the, the target audience. <laughs> it's like, it's you, it's all of you guys. So I don't even done a dwarf fortress stream yet. Yeah. So it's weird. Cause I feel like my, I, it's kind of split where it's like things like dwarf fortress or um, space station 13 or like kind of the really text heavy, like hyper nerdy stuff, right? That even like Stellaris, I, I put in like a similar category. That's got like a certain appeal for people. And then there's like, you know, playing uh, Won't you two just like fucking. You're making me look 
uh, Sub Rosa, like what's on my intro screen, Sub Rosa with the gang. It's like a totally different vibe, right? Um, and I think uh, I'm just like trying to reconcile both of those sides of me and like my content right now, you know? And I, I realize I never talk about this sort of stuff. I'm just kind of vomiting it out because it's been on my mind a lot lately. And rather than I think going crazy, thinking about it all alone, <laughs> I might as well uh, chat with you guys, you know? So that's uh, that's where we're at. Miss Cronovan? Well, I have the freaking wig and eyeliner right over there. So, you know, it's not really a, it's not a stretch. He's, he could always return. Really like the Skyrim with chat streams. I, I appreciate that. There's definitely more of that coming. Um, but that stuff takes a lot of time. And so in between, it's like I still want to, you know, do stuff, right? It's not like I'm uh, I'm just kind of waiting for, like, the next big event stream. Um, Pulsar, that's another fun one. Here, I'm just going to start writing these down. Things that uh, that you guys are excited about. Um, Barotrauma, I already had on there. That was a thing I've already been working on planning. Uh Brother, wait, what's the what's the brother band one? Band Brothers? That's Band of Brothers. Um, Pulsar. Battle Brothers, that's the one. Battle Brothers. Um, Kenshi again? Kenshi's such a long form thing, but it, it is fun. I don't know. I feel like I need like a good a good reason to play it again, or like a new mod or something. Cry of Fear revisit. That'd be fun. Any Bramble stuff in the works? Um, I've been thinking about it. I, I think... I think I, I bit off more than I, I was ready for when I first introduced Bramble because I was trying to do a lot. I was juggling a lot. My first time ever VTubing, um, trying to make it like a educational thing where like the character grows and learns from chat interaction and then also not playing myself, playing like a character... It was like, it, I think it was too much. It just kind of it stressed me out. Um, and so I think if I was going to do Bramble again, I'd probably want to rein it in a bit and make it a bit more uh, a bit more organic to the channel, you know? Um, but I do appreciate that you guys keep asking. That, that's nice that you like to see new stuff. Modded Minecraft is always fun. We got Pixelmon. We got, you know, other permadeath things. Um, I know we've... We've talked about doing more servers like that. I think there's a new Conan Exiles update coming out soon. That could be fun to revisit. Mm, randomizers and RP nights. Yeah, I think those are two of the bread and butter of my kind of style. Um, the problem is finding randomizers that work well enough. You know, like there was a reason Crash Man became such a iconic figure of the uh, Fallout New Vegas I can't runs. Recall. Ever loving moment. Hey, Sci Fry. Like moment Thank you for me. the raid, man. How are you guys doing? Sput and Sci Fry raid? Oh my god, my buddies. Am I gonna see you guys in uh in VR later tonight? I'd I'd like that. Thanks for the raid, guys. How's Fall Guys? I know you guys have been playing Fall Guys, right? Yes, you're charging your VR. Hell yeah, I'll do that. I should do that too. It's right next to me. They got their asses kicked. Oh no. Uh, oh, the raft finale is, is Sput here. Sput, the raft uh, game is done. Do you want to go back to the raft and and uh, and be um, empaths together again? That was pretty fun. Raft was pretty fun, right? I don't know what the new update is. Jedi Academy multiplayer. That's a deep cut. Jedi Academy. Here. Um, let's pull this up. Patrick, you don't swim in your toilet, so don't pee in the sea. Using a good old-fashioned notepad. Hey, Boone, 98 months. Two more to go. Man, Boone didn't even leave a message. He was just like, fuck. I can't be bothered. I'm going to wait till I hit big old 100. And he's got the fucking joke of a century coming. <laughs> What's up, man? Hope you're doing well. I've been really enjoying watching uh, you and Lena doing the uh, this important boys. That's another one. Modded Sims is always all evergreen content, as we say, you know? Jedi Academy movie battles, right? 
Sky Academy movie battles. I'll make sure I add that part. Um, what else? My Summer Car? I, I, I never played that. That seems like it, like a game that's just having fun being a, like a struggle, you know? I don't even drive cars in real life, let alone building a car that I don't know how to drive. That sounds like the worst combination. Play GTFO with me, Boone, and Lena. I, I love that. I, lo I really enjoyed that last time. You could do an NPC RP night. <laughs> GTA 5 or Red Dead RP. Yeah, we don't really have an RP uh, outlet right now, do we? Hot coal walking stream. Uh, I consider that way longer than I should have. <laughs> um, have I tried Barony? No. What's Barony? No Man's Sky? I haven't played No Man's Sky. Divinity 2. I would love to play Divinity 2 if I could find people that would be willing to play again. Um, or also, like, knowing what mods are out there for it. I feel like it's kind of all over the place. Barony has co-op. Okay. Barony co-op. Done. Uh, Divinity 2 modded run plus some other gimmick. We'll workshop this. Um, have I played through Morrowind or just multiplayer stuff? No, I just played Morrowind multiplayer pretty much. Uh, disaster Report Day of Crisis. Okay, Boone. I, I'll just write that down. Disaster Report Day of Crisis. Uh, oh, I also didn't play Observer. Is that a, a thing people played a bunch, right? Um, that's the one where you, like, stare at a screen. You're like, aha, there's Waldo, but it's a horror thing, right? It's a VTuber game? What makes that a VTuber game? Michigan Report from Hell. I have heard about that one. Observation Duty. That's the one I was thinking of. It was a VTuber trend game. Okay, okay. Um, I Spy Haunted Mansion, Boone. That was my go-to game when I was a kid. <laughs> I I love that game. I hear I hear the voice of the narrator in my head when you say that. I Spy's Haunted Mansion. All right, hold on. I'm gonna pull up a, a clip of this right now. This might this might even become tonight's stream. I Spy Haunted Mansion. Don't come! Don't come! The crowd, uh, Crypt Patrol Patrol for the five months. Look how cool this is. Enter if you dare. Okay, I couldn't tell. In this game, does the skeleton is that the skeleton's voice or is that someone else's voice? It's a scary game though, guys, so be be wary. I played this when I was a kid, and that explains why I'm so fucked up. You're in for a scare. <laughs> You've entered the house. Now the fun can begin. Too bad you can't get out. The way you came in. <laughs> There's another way out. There's no doorknob. This is already too scary. Here is a clue. Behind the picture frame. Is this like the train game you and your dad played? Yeah, actually. Same same era, pretty much. Wait, hold on. I'll get you guys bigger. Is a puzzle for you. This puzzle is a secret message which tells you how to get out of the house. But the pieces aren't here yet. To earn puzzle pieces, you have to go solve the I Spy riddles that I've hidden in this house. And they all look like this. A key in a lock. And they all do a little dance when you, when you find it. Your name. A bent paper clip. A lens with a crack. I, this is gonna be great because I can just I can already see Twitch chat screaming. <laughs> like, 
over there, streamer, the lens with the crack. Uh, this is literally just the the natural transformation of my channel where I become Dora the Explorer, like on Twitch. That's already we're like ninety percent of the way there, you know. <laughs> uh, thank you, Blazeheart, for the thirty eight months. Happy anniversary, Kraken. I mean, it isn't, but thank you. One game that might be cool to do is return to the dads for the forest or the forest two when it comes out. Yeah, I think the forest is always good. Um, uh, the forest dads return. Uh, yeah, I'll throw that in the list of the others. Natural Selection 2. That's a game I haven't thought about in a long time. I feel like we played that within like the last couple of years and people got burnt out within like two hours. But maybe. It's tough to organize everyone together for something, you know? Like getting the whole gang to play something. Will you be playing the quarry? Yeah, I'm waiting for the multiplayer mod to come out. Or not mod, but you know, functionality. Um... Did I finish Subnautica? Nope. It was too scary. I stopped. But I could, I could play it again, probably. That's an option. I'll throw that on there. Subnautica Deep Zero. I forget the name. It's the cold one. Um, Their plans for more Dragon's Touch Dogma? Not. I am yeah, I do think we're kind of running to the end of the lifespan on that a little bit. I think your friend wants to eat it's me. tough to finish Please games, man. I feel like we got to keep moving and find new stuff. Because, like, if, if you're showing up on, like, you know, stream, like, number eight of a game, and you're like, man, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> like, people don't usually stick around for that. So, you know, I feel like short bursts are usually best. Uh, William ID, thank you for the two years, man. about the quarry? Oh yeah, I I talked about the quarry. I don't think I wrote it down though. The quarry multiplayer. Um another Mario Party night I also want to do. Drunk Mario Party. Although I don't know if anyone else wants to do it with me after what happened last time when I yelled at Sput. Poor guy. Elden Ring randomizer, that's true. Um, Mario Party brings up the darkness in you. It's true. Mario Party seems pog. Yeah, it'd be fun to play with your sci-fi. Um, Dark Souls three randomizer. I guess we didn't play Dark Souls three randomizer, did we? We only did uh one. Hmm. Probably a Sonic Club. I mean, it's. Uh, more the issue of scheduling with someone also on a different time zone that has a day job. <laughs> so it's kind of tough to uh, to play with Dave all the time. But I do love whenever I get to play with Dave. Return to Deep Rock. You had a skin color named after your video. Yeah, Jaundice. We had Jaundice named after our video. Um, which is, a you know, the greatest honor. Thank you, Deep Rock Galactic, for that. Um, I don't know. I don't. I feel like I don't have any friends that play Deep Rock Galactic, but I know you guys like it, right? New Vegas door randomizer. Yeah, I mean that's that's on the list already. I should put randomizers just in general on here. Randomizers, New Vegas, plus whatever you have time and energy to troubleshoot. Because they are not always that easy. Weird take Phoenix Wright games. I have never played any Phoenix Wright games. Not a one. Cuphead DLC. Is that out now? Is that out? I, I've completely forgotten about Cuphead. I watched the Netflix series and I was like, wait, it's a kid's show. And then I didn't, I stopped watching it. Is it good? It's really short. It's crazy. It was in development for so long. 
maybe Crusader Kings two or three modern vanilla. I mean, like those streams, especially uh, the ones where you played Crusader Kings three with the Bannerlord mod. Yeah, Crusader Kings three with, with Bannerlord was neat. Um, I wonder if that mod still works. Crusader Kings plus Bannerlord. Yeah, we we didn't really get that far in that campaign. Um, ever thought about the Yakuza series? Yes. People have told me I'd love the Yakuza, but I've never played it. Um, Yakuza Zero, right? Is the is the best starting place. The problem is, yeah, I don't I don't think I would finish it. Um, I have a really hard time finishing games on stream. Wish I was better at it, but they're when they're long and they're story focused, like I, I usually check out, I think. So there's one here mod for Ben Lord. I don't know if anyone mentioned it. It's Empire and Vampires right now, but it's solid. Yeah, I talked I looked into it a little bit. I don't think it's enough for like a full playthrough, but maybe like for like a little spotlight could be neat. I think a lot of these, especially like the narrative ones or like the ones with the that could be really long form, I would want some sort of like spin on it. Cause I'm never I don't I'm not really satisfied just like streaming a game and just playing through the game and like vaguely talking to chat the whole time. I don't, I don't know if that sounds weird. I it's just it's like I've been doing that for so long. It's like I I I think I I enjoy stuff like Elden Ring randomizers or, you know, Quarry multiplayer th like stuff with friends where it becomes like a show or like a, kind of a commentary. Those are fun. Even I Spy's Haunted Mansion I think would be fun because of the chat kind of interaction and like you guys getting involved. Um but like I feel like a lot of these just need uh, like a little extra spice. I, I, I'm trying to figure out what that is. Um, That's epic. Hi Tyler, 127 months. Incredible, unreal. Thank you so much, Tyler. Longest running sub I've ever I've ever seen on this website. <laughs> Thank you. A disco Elysium. And role play having the same psychology as your character build. That sounds dangerous. I don't know what the psychology options are for Disco Elysium, but I don't know if I want a role play being like a schizophrenic. I think that's going to be kind of problematic. You played Kenna. I have not actually. Kenna is one that snuck by me. Um, uh, Disco Elysium, though. GeoGuessr with chat could be fun. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in like some, I want to do like more crowdsourced storytelling stuff. Like I really liked in Kenshi when we had the um, the queen raffle where like the queen got to give directives uh, for the rest of the, the run. So I want to do more stuff like that. Um, I want to do like stuff where we had... Hey, good potatoes. Thank you for the 19 months. A little more RPGs and RP already suggested. More Arma slash squad. Um, oh, someone brought up a... I think, is it a squad mod? Squad mod. Is it... Oh, fuck. Was it Star Wars or Starship Troopers? Squad mod. The Star Wars squad mod. Yes. That definitely we should schedule. Star Wars mod's really good now. Yeah, I heard about that. Sims 4 furry mod is on sale. Very good. Very cool. All the co-op Nuzlocke series are dope as hell. Thanks. Uh, you ever tried Jade Empire? I'm not sure if it holds up these days, but it's somewhat similar to KOTOR. I have not. Oh, yeah, the, the Starship Trooper game that's an RTS. Maybe. I'd have to look into it. I don't know if... That's enough for me. I'm not usually a huge RTS guy, uh, which sounds strange. Not because I've been playing so much Stellaris, but I guess that's not really the same thing. It's 4X. I don't know. Um, and Total War, I guess. I like a lot. You ever play Grounded? I did not play Grounded. Grounded co-op day. That's easy enough. Um, 
Any other Pokemon randomizer races? Yes. We do have another one in the pipe. Uh, it's just been a matter of when we want to do it, you know? You just shout out a bunch of games and DMs. Thank you, Boone. Wait, I don't know where the DMs are. Hold on. No leak. Okay. Holy shit. Yo! Already I'm seeing a few of these that I had been thinking about. Black and white, too, has definitely been on my list. I even got it working, and then I never streamed it. Black and white, too. What? Why did you put... That's the only one in all caps. <laughs> Boone, uh... I'm going to leak our DMs. Boone. <laughs> Boone, Boone <laughs> wrote all of these, and then just black and white, too, speed run is in all caps. Vampire Bloodlines again. Pixelmon again. All right. I respect both of those. Those are both good. Um, any of the fables. Yeah. I, are there any mods for the fables? Oh, yeah. Obra Din. Turn of the Obra Din. I have not done that. Fortnite's on there. Okay. Uh, Spore. I have not played sports since I was a kid. Um, Dread Hunger had a lot of updates. There are mods for Black and White to let you play any faction. Ooh, I didn't know there were mods. Modded? That game was hard as hell to track down. Um... Childhood game series, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Dexter. Um, yeah, I think honestly, that's a, that's a, that's a good idea. Like, I want something that's like a series, something that's like kind of reliable. I feel like, you know, depending on the week, you'll either have like a great time watching this channel, or you'll have a terrible time, depending on what sort of like you know viewer you are. <laughs> um, and I feel bad about that. I feel bad that it's like. Uh, you never really know when the thing you're going to be interested in is going to happen. So, you know, Movie Game Monday was neat because I think, you know, we had, like, a regular format, but even then it's, like, hard as hell to get each of the games to work and then also find someone. So, you know, maybe it's, like, we pick kind of a thematic day, right, um, that we can be a little more, uh, a little more scheduled about. Craig's Boomerang Show. Boomer being the freaking capital B O O M E R, you know? Throwback Thursday. The, the promise, name's already there. Once I'm done, you won't feel a thing. Charborg, thank you for the 35 months, buddy. Want to play Dragon Role Play with me? It'll be so cool. Charborg, I'm down to do any role play with you. And I realized after that left my mouth, I regret it immediately. But it's out there, it's in the ether, and it's now. Uh, I guess possible. So you pick the time and place, buddy. I'll be there. That is a that's a dangerous promise I just made. Um Rimworld with mods. Yeah, I, I never got like super into Rimworld. I don't know if I just haven't it hasn't clicked for me yet or what. Another try his love. Co-op. Um, I'm glad you guys like the, the Warhammer stuff. I really want to play more Total War Warhammer 3. But I feel like until Immortal Empires comes out or like the big DLC, um, it's kind of it's kind of too soon to jump into it. So I'm hoping in August it'll, you know, it'll pop off. Um, of course, Dark Tide's going to be huge on this channel. Uh, I could do Vermintide in the meantime. I don't know if, you know, there's enough new stuff in Vermintide that you guys would want to see more of that. Um, give us a little hot tub streak. You know what? I never played the Thief games, and Tomato swears by them so much. He, he told me for years to try them. Thief games. W what is the right Thief? Is it Thief 2? I know there's a ton of modded content for it too. Thief 2 plus dark mod. Sticks, yeah. 
Uh, sticks. Uh, that's like a dark spot in my stream history. I don't even want to think about it. Dark Messiah of Might and Magic with mods. Is there mods for that game? Dark Messiah of Might and Magic mods? Alan Wake. I hated Alan Wake. It was so boring. I hated his commentary. And he just fucking uses a little flashlight. And he's like, oh, I miss I miss my fucking wife or whatever. I don't, I don't remember the plot. But <laughs> I didn't like him. Um, signal Simulator. Rakeeter. Oh, what's this one? An item shop tale? That sounds fun. Hold on. Is this like where you're, oh, it's an anime game. Okay. You you sell, wait, what the hell? This is nothing like what I expected. I thought this was like one of those, th like those games where you, uh, you like run a shop and try to, like, like the potion maker or something, you know? What's that graveyard game called again? It is? Well, the, what, okay. I guess I'm confused with the screenshots I'm seeing. Capitalism ho. Maybe we should just have like a, you know, a themed month. We'll have like capitalist month. We'll have anti-capitalist month back to back. You know, it's going to be a really dramatic shift when that happens. Um, Kipuna. Bona na Kichiro, thank you for the 94 months. Cursed Halo playthrough. I think that's all of our Halo playthroughs. Um, don't know if you've noticed, but and have. Oh wait, why did I move you guys off screen? I'm sorry. Come back. <laughs> um, what was I looking at just now? I really liked um, Monster Rancher. If there are more games like that. That would be kind of neat. Um, there's that new game that's like a Pokemon esque game that had like Nuzlocke rules built oh into my it. God. I don't remember what that one's called. Uh, Bartholomew Balazar. Thank you for the nice. Coromon? Is that it? It has a Nuzlocke and a randomizer. Coromon Nuzlocke plus randomizer. Outward uh, definitive, definitive edition with mods. I don't, Outward always feels like it's gonna be great and then I get burnt out like one stream in. It's, it's like hard to return to. Battle Brothers is already on the list. Um, Boone's asking for a Digimon day. I know there's one Digimon game on the Switch. Is that, is, is, that, is that the good one? That's the detective one, right? I actually never played like Digimon when I was a kid. I was only Pokemon. I was, I was faithful to the brand. Cyber Sleuth is all right, but it's very horny. Why is it horny? Isn't it a kid's IP? Tony Hawk Underground. It's also on PC. I didn't know that. Have you seen any of the Digimon out there? Yeah, they're like fucking, I don't know, giant mecha dragons, right? Aliens Fire Team. Boone's saying, uh, is this supposed to be Saucy? Saucy Sunday, where you play old source games and switch every few hours? Saucy Sunday. <laughs> okay, old source games. There are a lot of those. 
Mm. Very different. Sven co-op's always neat. Did you ever play Teardown full release? I did not. Teardown. You know what we should do? We should find a way to make Teardown like co-op, like co-op or competitive. I really liked when we did that one stream where like Charborg and I were racing in that one teardown map. Um, teardown races, maybe? Let's do it again. Okay. That could be fun. Teardown races with car job. Um, Star Sector. People have recommended that a bunch. I keep going through the tutorial and I feel like it's not great, but maybe I'll stick with I'll stick through it. I have a thing that has every Flash game ever made and you can go through the classics. Really? You mean like addictinggames.com style Flash games? What an ominous I have a thing. Oh, you can't even read that. It says, I have a thing that has every Splash game ever made. Freaking party stream. It's a party and only you are the only person at it. We did that for my birthday. <laughs> We've already been there. Oh, God. Charbrook sent me a message. I'm afraid to open it. What's it going to be? Is it going to be his fan art? Come on. Okay, we're making plans for teardown. That's gonna be good. That's a good one. Um, some more Dragon Age games. Uh, I only played Dragon Age Origins. I don't know if any of them are worth it. Uh, oh, there's the Dread Collection. I don't know why that just popped in my head, but for horror. Awakening is good. Dragon Age Awakening. Dragon Age Awakening. Is that the is that the one with the that like elf dude that everyone fell in love with? But he's an asshole. I literally I, my like college friends wouldn't stop talking about that. They're really into him. That's Inquisition. Okay. Is there an RPG where you exclusively fall in love with an asshole elf guys? I'd play that one. <laughs> I feel like it's uh that could definitely be made. Exanima. I have had I've been aware of Exanima since I was like fucking eighteen. I've watched it developed and I never played it. I don't know why. Um, have you played Darkwood? No, I have not either. Divinity Campaign, but one of you is the antagonist. Unfortunately, that was our last Divinity Campaign. I accidentally was the secret antagonist the entire time. And I will never live it down. So, probably not. Kerbal Space Program. Uh oh. Arma Halo. Yeah, we've looked into the Arma Halo. We're going to do that at some point, I think. Itchy. Think of the 39 months. 
Baldur's Gate 3 antagonist run. I mean, we're going to play a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 when it's ready, but I think we're all deciding to wait till it's uh, released, so we're not going to have a bunch of false starts, you know? Start learning and playing Rocket League with the boys? That's not going to happen. I have no interest to play Rocket League. I'm, I draw the line there. I, I have absolutely no interest in Rocket League. Maybe Boone teaching a fighting game. Mm, I'm not really good at those games. I played Smash Bros. That's about it. I hope Baldur's Gate 3 is its own game and isn't just Divinity again. Yeah, Cypher, have you played any of the uh, the beta? Or like, you know, the early access of it? Because it... it I could see I could see that criticism still, but I think narratively it's it's trying to be pretty robust in its own thing. You're saving yourself for release? Smart man. Project Zomboy is pretty fun. Yeah, I... I like game. I like streams where there really is like all of these different perspectives from all of like our friends playing and you know understanding everyone what's going on everywhere is all filling in the rest of the story. You know, uh, there's just not many games that like support that that kind of shared storytelling. So who knows? Terraria might be fun for a chill co-op night. Listen, it's going to get me some flack. I've never liked Terraria. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. I've never liked it. I've never liked it. I like Minecraft. I do not like Terraria. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I can't. I, I don't have any explanation. I just, it's not my thing. Oh, there's that, uh, what's that space game with the freaking, uh, not, not moon based alpha, but it's, you're in a space station and you gotta work together to not die. I watched Boone and Cypher play that and look great. No, not space station 13. Similar, but no. Uh, I would play more space station 13 though. Celestial bodies. That's it. That, that's definitely going on there. Um, have you tried impossible creatures? No. What is that? That sounds like two words that I always look for. Or, you know, that pique my interest. Impossible creatures. What the fuck is this? It's a 3DS, a 3D RTS game that pits the player against an evil villain using Earth's most formidable animals as building blocks. The player must create an army of genetically altered mutant monsters in a titanic struggle to protect an unsuspecting world. It's an RTS? Why? What a weird genre for this for this game. I'm going to put you guys behind me. There's a shooter version of this too. It it looks like Spore, but like the second part of Spore only. I mean, it's fucking three dollars on Steam. Okay, I'll I'll throw it in the cart. We'll get to that. That's like the other game that I played that I was really into for a bit. Um, oh boy, let's see if I remember the name. Uh, genetic, genetic something. Let's look. God, 12 minutes was such a fucking trash fire. I hated it, I hated it. Um, I have Yakuza. I I've bought a bunch of these games we're talking about. Gene Forger. Uh, I've literally never once launched this game. 
Do people still like this? I've never once tried it. What is in Carrion. I was excited for Carrion, but I never actually played it either. Um, mm, play Cyberpunk again. God, where is it? <laughs> Monkey game. It's going to bug me if I don't remember what it is. No, it's none of these. Fuck. Order it alphabetically? No, I'm ordering it from when I last played things, so they know roughly when I last played them. I played it, or Teardown was way back then. 2021. Of January. Um, Besiege. I don't remember playing this game at all. Academy. What the hell is this? What is this? Mutant Year Zero? I played this for, oh, for 11 minutes. <laughs> it's an XCOM style game. It's XCOM but furry. Okay. Uh... Man, what I, w I wonder what fucked like offended me so much within the eleven minutes that I decided to to stop it. Was for a sponsor. If it was a sponsor, then I definitely didn't play it because it's just I only played eleven minutes. Um, this was when uh, Cronovan was involved or invented March tenth, twenty nineteen. I like it's literally the last time I I played this game was when Cronovan was invented. There it is, species. This fucking game. I loved this game. What a weird game that no one uh, ever thinks about. Species, artificial life, real evolution. I So this is all part of, there's kind of a new genre of an interactive show that I, I've been working through in my head that I'm really interested in, which is, like, kind of inspired by what we did with Kenshi and, um, and, uh, and you guys pl role playing as the queen, but like chat basically giving, like, I give a prompt and chat gives a response, and then that becomes like a run, you know, and then either that run is successful or it fails. If it's successful, then maybe like you guys win gifted subs. If it fails, then, like, maybe we ban 50 people, you know? It becomes, like, a thing that we're all in the same, you know, we're, we're like, we're, uh, we're, we're debating it. Hi, Elena. Oh, okay, bye, Elena. I'm retrying to decipher what the queen was saying. Yeah. Ad lib Kenshi. Sure. It's, it's kind of like Mad Libs, right? You guys ever play Mad Libs? Factorio. I don't know how anyone can watch Factorio unless they're like the same brain people that also play Factorio. I guess it's the same as Stellaris, right? You're like, you're either way in it or you're not. This is when we tested uh, doing the Amish Challenge Lord of the Rings. I think I just left it on, though. I don't think I actually played that much. Um, Did you play the Eternal Cylinder? No. SCP Pandemic? What's that? SCP Pandemic. I lie about my age on Steam. Yeah, I'm a bit of a badass. This is just a gun game. Where's the SCP part? I guess that guy is dead. I 
I don't know about this, Chief Beppis. <laughs> why, why is this marketed as an SCP game when all I've seen is gun? Like, look at how cool my gun is and how accurate it is. It's a very mid. You could do AI dungeon again. Yeah, so uh, there's a different... Um, that's actually one of the things I was considering for tonight, even. There's a uh, there's a different game that uses an AI to do storytelling for a different engine that... Uh, who was it that reached out to me about it? Um, novel AI. Yeah, that's right. Let me pull up the message. Was Senior Bob. Thank you, Senior Bob. Novel AI. Yeah, apparently novel AI is the big the big new AI dungeon, you know. Less horny AI. Uh, is it less horny? That's already challenging. Does it have Count Gray? We can make Count Gray our first character in uh you know, maybe let's let's test it out. Let's just see what we what we think about it. I know I made an account. Novel AI is definitely not less horny. Great news story. <laughs> you will listen to my poem. Space Catet, thank you for the 38 months. Um, let's try text adventure. All right, let's see if this makes it on our list. Do the edit mode, so I should not do the text adventure mode. Why? Why that though? Enter the, your prompt here. Space Beast Terror Fright is a good horror co-op game. Space Beast Terror Fright. What the heck? This looks... Super generic. Is it do you play as a monster too? It's an arcade style roguelike permadeath first person shooter. You play as Marines who must brave dark, claustrophobic, and terrifying here. Let me open that. Hmm. Thank you, your buddy Ryan, for the year-long reset. Happy one year. I think you should really like the game Amazing Island. What's that? What's that? All right, let maybe... Oh, shit. Log me out. Uh, create new story. Storyteller. Okay, enter your prompt here. Let's see how, how good this is. Um, a young man is trying to figure out what to do with his day. It's not going very well. Uh, begin. He has a job interview, but he doesn't think he'll get it because he hasn't. He has had a much job interview, but he doesn't think he'll get it because he hasn't had much experience yet. His boss wants him to work on this project that was supposed to have been finished yesterday, and he won't even tell him how long the project will take or if the deadline can can be extended. The 
story. A young man sighs deeply and closes his laptop. Wait, he has a job interview, but his boss wants him to work on a project. So he has a... Does he have the job or not? Um, the young man realizes that if he doesn't get this job, he'll probably be fired by his boss. And if that happens, how's he... How's he gonna pay the rent? Go. He looks at his watch. Oh, no. It's almost noon already. He'd better start getting ready for his interview. He scurries through the apartment looking for something to wear. And when I say he scurries, I mean it. You see, this young man is actually a man-sized rat that is trying to pass as a human to get this job. Your first instinct might be to kill him now, but you shouldn't. After all, he just needs one good break in life, and you're about to give it to him. You should warn him that his little ratty tail is showing, though. <laughs> um. Hey. Cousin. Your little ratty tail is showing, says the young man's cousin who he lives with and is not a rat. I'm pulling it back, guys. I don't know why the kill the killing thing was weird, um, but we'll just ignore that. Oh yeah, says the young man. I forgot to pull my pants down before I left the house uh -oh. this morning. You should probably let him know that rats are mammals and humans aren't. <laughs> humans aren't mammals? Wait, what's going on? All right, I'm learning a lot from this, man. Um Hey, cuz, you do know humans are reptiles, right? I said with a smirk. I'm getting really cold. And eyes uh, cold as ice. All right, leave me alone. The young man's cousin laughs and says, Yeah, 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 I know. But I don't care because I'm not going to marry you anyway. You should probably point out that marriage is an important tradition among many of the most intelligent species in the galaxy. All right. You know, maybe we'll give this a couple more months uh, on the back burner. You know, let it uh, work the kinks out. And then, you know, bam, we'll have a great old um, AI storytelling session. Uh yeah, I it real quickly turned to incest and galactic uh, marriage. So, hmm. I, apparently there's other... Uh, <laughs> right at the good part. Apparently there's other, like, configurations. Um... HP Lovecraft style. I don't know what that means, and I'm hoping it's like, you know, that, that could be. Oh wait, you don't even see this because the chat's in the way. Um, yeah, I'm hoping it's not racist, <laughs> but you know, there's like Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Sheridan Le Fanu. I don't know most of these. 19th century romance. Um, 
airships, artificial intelligence. We could do a Christmas one. What if we did a Christmas one on Christmas? That'd be kind of neat, right? Dark fantasy. Dragons. Oh, where's Charborg when you need him? Here. I added the dragon theme. Um, dragons. There once was a big... <laughs> and when I say big, I mean big bronze-colored dragon named Babinthia. And she lived in a mountain flecked with snow. Go forth, AI. Create me a, 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 an epic. Spabinthi had a small cave to herself that she shared with a few other dragons who were not her friends, but there was enough room for them all. However, it wasn't quite so comfortable as the cold air leaked through from outside. Very reasonable and realistic, you know, just, it, it, we all, we've all had roommates before, um, <laughs> just dragon roommates. Babinthia <laughs> says, said to them, look, I know we're not the best of friends, but I hope we can get along at least until the winter comes and the great fires light the night once again. See, I'm adding a little bit of a, like a background lore. Let's see if she takes onto it. Come on, roll with it. I don't think you'll be needing us then. One dragon who was an older female answered back. She didn't sound like she wanted to help Espabendia much either, but at least she could feel free to say something bad about her without any repercussions. Babinthia let out a low growl from the depths of her throat and looked at the older dragon with a menacing glare. You wouldn't dare say that to my dragon face, would you? Espabinthia thought to herself. The female dragon rolled her eyes and walked away saying, You'd better believe it. They all heard her leave behind her snorty laugh which made them all look down into their paws instead of meeting each other's eye. All looked into their little dragon paws. <laughs> That's it. Spabinthia exclaimed before leaping out of the cozy of the small cave on her own and chasing after the female dragon. This, this isn't over. I'm not letting this go. The rest of the dragons chuckled together while they watched the two fight it out in front of them. The older female dragon was way bigger than Isbabinthia, which gave her some advantage against the smaller bronze. Wait, but I said Spabinthia is big, and when I say big, I mean big. What do you mean smaller bronze? Oh, my God. Well, you know, the rest of it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm being laughed at. She's bigger, though. I guess, yeah, big means big could mean that there's someone even bigger, though. There's always a bigger dragon. That's the thing. Um, Babinthia realized she couldn't win this duel, and with a snarl, she flew off in the direction of the castle. Crabin... Cap... Bull...
where she knew the magic ring of Porf would even the odds for her next fight. When Espabinthia reached the castle, she walked up the steps and over to the door and knocked on it. Who is it? Her voice called from inside the castle. Espabinthia turned around and saw a knight standing behind him with armor covering his body and a sword strapped across. Across? Not behind her. The sword strapped across his waist. Oh. Sorry, is this your castle? Asked Spabinthia. I was looking for the magic ring of Porf. Go away, little girl, the knight said rudely with a sneer. Hespabinthia felt insulted by the knight's rudeness and said, Listen, old man, I'm not a little girl and you shouldn't talk to me like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because she was in fact not a little girl, but actually a really big, and when I say big, I mean big dragon. All right, get that through your freaking head, AI. The knight took a step back and stared at Espabinthia, who was now towering above him. His mouth was wide open with shock as he tried to speak, but no words came out. Oh, now he realizes. Oh, now you realize I'm actually a big freaking dragon, huh? snarled Spabinthia before extending her claw in anticipation for him to give her the magic ring of Porf. However, the knight just stood there as if he was frozen in place. This isn't fair, Spabinthia thought to herself as she walked past the knight and into the castle. Once inside us, Babinthia found a room full of golden jewels, which she picked up and dropped on the... Uh, dropped on the... Canvas cloth she left outside, specifically to transport gold and jewels, should she find them. This would make a great... Paul, that'll surely prove to the other dragons she was the best, she thought. Once Babinthia was done picking through the treasure room, she walked down a hallway and reached a dead end. This isn't right. I need to go back the other way. Wait a second. Oh, wait a second. Just then, a cackle could be heard from the top of the castle. It was the sorcerer Charborg and he has has the ring of Poff Pom Porf 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 on his finger. Curse you coward, Espabinthia shouted. Charborg laughed and said, Have fun with that little girl. Then the sorcerer vanished in thin air. 
Uh, yes, Bob. And Thea didn't know what to do, so she did the what only happened? thing she could think of. She. Is the AI okay? What happened? <laughs> Just stroked out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> um, didn't know what she could do. She could think of. She roared so loud, and breathed a giant plume. Plume of fire, where the sorcerer. Charborg once was. It caught the wall on fire and scorched the stone floor beneath Esbebendia's feet. She lost her balance and fell onto the ground hard, causing her head to slam against the ground. Oh no! She was knocked out cold. Which made it all the worse when... The knight came back and <gasps> stole the magic ring of pore from her body. No! There once was a small bronze colored dragon named Esbabenthia who lived in a mountain flecked with snow. <laughs> Wait, now why is she telling my story part again? That's literally what I started with. New chapter, okay. She once held the magic ring of Porf in her claws, but it was taken by the evil sorcerer Charborg and his trusty knight Cyfry. I'm right, you in Cyfry, don't worry. Esbabinthia was told by the sorceress Vakronia how she could get the ring back by going to the castle Crab and Capel and facing Charborg in battle. However, Esbabinthia said to the sorceress, Wifey's too strong for me to beat. <laughs> uh, then you'll lose, Lamau replied. The Sorceress Vicronia before disappearing in a puff of smoke. I hate it when they do that. Spabinthia grumbled to herself, thinking about all the sorcerers and sorceresses she had met in her journeys. Dude, I think I could write a children's story, man. I'm good at this shit. It never fails. You can defeat the most powerful sorcerer alive, and then they disappear in a cloud of smoke and leave you there to figure it out yourself. Hespabentia continued her thoughts until she was interrupted by a knock at her cave entrance. That was pretty good. Dude, this AI is actually, like... Yes, anding me surprisingly well. I'm actually, I'm, I'm impressed. I think we could do like a whole stream of this. Um, let's see. Uh, a knock on the cave entrance. Who is it? Called Spabinthia as she headed for the mouth of the cave. I'm going to let them figure out who it is. A voice answered, It's me, your best friend, Corden. Oh. This Babinthia opened the door and saw her friend walk through with his eyes closed. He must have been trying to see if anyone was lurking around or if someone was following him. Why was his eyes closed? <laughs> Corden, my best friend. I hope you haven't gotten into too much trouble since we last saw each other, said Babinthia. I've been fine, I guess, 
I found that strange-looking box in the middle of nowhere, and I decided to take a look inside because I always wanted to know what was inside. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a good surprise when I found a purple gemstone inside the box that glowed like crazy. <laughs> wow, that's so crazy. <laughs> Said Spabinthia, not really paying attention and thinking instead about the magic ring of Porf and how she was going to get it back. Wow, so crazy, Gordon. And what happened after you found the magic ring of Porf? Well, I decided to hold on to it until I figured out what exactly it did so I could use it properly. But why? But why? But why? I don't know. I don't know why, Corden. I'm an indecisive little dragon and I can't make up my mind. She harumphed before storming off back into her cave in tears. Corden looked a little ashamed of himself for pushing poor Spabinthia so hard on this whole porphring thing. <laughs> All right, fine. Not little. How do, you, how do you fucking spell indecisive? Indecisive. I'm, a, I'm an indecisive big dragon. Let's see, happy? Sorry, Spabintia. I'm sorry. I'll bring the ring back yeah. tomorrow if you want me to. Spabintia nodded. That would be great, but if you don't come tomorrow, you'll be grounded for life. Ooh, Corden's gonna get grounded. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen. Uh, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> um, uh, okay, that sounds very threatening for a dragon. Uh, okay, uh, Gordon nods, knowing this threat to not be an idle one. I'll be right back, he says, before leaving the cave in search for the ring. All right. There once was a young bronze dragon named Espabinthia who was currently flying through the forest towards the castle Crabbing Capel. She had been told she needed to go to the castle to meet up with Charborg, the sorcerer who stole the magic ring of poor from her. Um, it, okay, here we go. It had been three days since Corden had promised to bring back the ring of Porf and... Spabinthia knew something was probably wrong. So she decided to fly over to the castle to see what was going on for herself. Nailed it. Okay. Spabinthia flew closer to the castle and then landed on a tree branch overlooking a battlefield. <gasps> hey, Charbor, where are you? Spabinthia asked aloud. As soon as she spoke, the saucer appeared from behind a rock and glared at Spabinthia with his bee. With his bee? <laughs> with his bald head shining in the sun. I killed your... Friend, Corden, Abinthia, 
is now one of my undead minions. Look. Charborg sneered as he points at a corpse on the nearby battlefield that looks awfully familiar. <gasps> I'm sure he's a very nice guy, but please don't kill him anymore. Spibinthia pleaded as she sat down on a large boulder and thought about what to do next. So you're going to keep killing my friends? All right, we're, uh, retry that. Here we go. Oh, but what happened to my friend Corden? He was supposed to bring me back the magic ring of Porf. Okay. Spibinthia yelled out in a panic. She felt betrayed and hurt by the sorcerer's actions. <laughs> That's right. Babinthia, you have lost. I hold the ring, the magic ring of Porf, and you have no friends left. On this green, God-given earth. Amen. <laughs> Preached. Charborg, the evil sorcerer. You hold no power against me. Wait. Charborg said as he threw the magic ring in the air, and it landed in Isbabinthia's claws. Take the ring, Isbabinthia. Take it and become stronger than ever before, oh my God. Charborg suggested while holding out his. Um, holding out his what? Uh, paw. He's a werewolf. Babinthia was um, shocked that Charborg would simply give her the ring to prove a point. But that's when she realized what the true power of the ring was all with the ring, sorry, of what the magic ring of Porfs was all along. And that is, come on, take us home. She could use it to control anyone, even Charborg, who was now under her spell. Espabinthia took the ring in her claws, and it started glowing brightly, and she felt its magical powers flow through her. And Charborg really miscalculated this one. Um... Oh, yeah. She smirked. Charborg. This! Roared Spabinthia as she pointed the full power of the magic ring of Porf at Charborg, the sorcerer. Suddenly, Charborg vanished in a cloud of smoke, and as Bebenthia was left feeling confused and without a clue as to what happened to her enemy, Charborg. His Bebenthia leapt off the tree branch and began to fly down towards the battlefield where she could see Charborg was still there. Now, this is storytelling. You don't get rid of the big bad, you know, in the first, the first book, right? This is like chapter three. We're still, we're still dealing with the sorcerers teleporting around. You know, it, the AI still remembers Bebenthia as a dragon. This is like... Already, honestly, better than I expected. Get back here, she yelled. Charborg raised his arms and laughed maniacally at Espebenthia as he disappears again in a cloud of smoke. 
You can't keep there away once with was this. a small silver colored dragon named Espabinthia who was flying through the forest towards the castle. Silver capital. It was bronze, but uh, I mean, maybe she evolved now. Um, you see, she was bronze before, but she evolved into silver upon recovery of the magic ring of Porf, which awarded her approximately. 30,000 EXP, enough to level up from Bronze Drake to Silver. Great. Now, at least the system is established. Um, <laughs> they is like, all right, When fuck she you. arrived at the castle, she flew over to the drawbridge leading into the courtyard. There she noticed a crowd of people and dragons standing near the main gate of the castle. What's going on? What's going on? It's Cordrin, said one of the people gathered around. He's back from the dead and has a speech to say. That's not his name? Cordin? Oops. Cord Cordin. Cordin. <gasps> Espabinthia wondered how that was possible considering she saw Charbor kill Cordin with the same sword he used to kill her. Uh. Suddenly a large group of people and dragons began marching towards the castle. Almost there. It, they, they remembered that Cordin was killed by Charborg, but I don't know why she was also killed by Charborg. Um... Another group of people and dragons began marching towards the castle. What's going on? Asked Babinthia and Kraken. <gasps> They're coming to save us from Charbor, the sorcerer. <gasps> Miss Babinthia jumped down from the tree branch and joined the crowd as they marched towards the castle. She was happy to hear that Corden is alive. Oh fuck yeah, dude! This is oh, we're in Act Three. Let's let's get it. But that excitement quickly soured to fear as she saw the fleshy abomination that once was her friend Corden strung. No, uh, chained up to the castle ramparts. He had six legs, two arms, two eyes, two noses, two ears, and two heads. He was a monster now. Espabinthia was horrified as she watched the beast being paraded through the streets by a squad of knights led by the evil sorcerer Charborg. As they approached the castle gates, the dragon Oni was greeted by the sound of a crowd cheering and chanting Cordon. But this wasn't the Cordon. But this wasn't her best friend Cordon anymore. This was... Monster Corridan. And he could barely be recognized if it weren't for his cute little eyes, which looked the same. The monster Corden looked at Espabintia with his six eyeballs and said, Espabintia, I am glad you came to rescue me. And now we can finally be together forever. Whoa! Whoa! Said Espabintia. I 
Never thought about you like that, Corden. And especially don't think about you like that now, that you're a fleshy, gross abomination that's been twisted by the evil magic of Charborg the Sorcerer. Get a life. Said Spabinthia. <laughs> the monster Corden nodded in agreement as he looked at Charborg, who was making his way over to them. You seem to be having problems with your little pet there, Charborg. Why don't you let him go and I can show you how a real monster acts? Oh shit. Do it then. You come before a king, one that they has reigned for eons. Let's fight then, she replied. I don't want to say do it. That might be misinterpreted. <laughs> um, preparing for the battle of a lifetime against her lifelong friend. Platonically. Charbart chuckled and turned to the monster cordon. You know, I think you're right. It may be time for me to step aside and let you handle things on your own. Charborg looked as Babinthia and said, Let's make this fair, shall we? Oh, it's heating up. Charborg the sorcerer lifted his gross little slimy magic wand and with a swish of his wrist, Babinthia's wings turned into legs. She couldn't fly for this fight. This would make the this would make the challenge much greater. She and Charborg stared each other down as they both waited for the signal to begin their battle. Charborg waved his hand and suddenly as Babinthia's body became covered in scales and fur. <laughs> All right. We're here. We're we're fully in now. It's uh the AI has gone all in and it is now a furry scaly story. Um I tried to keep it fantasy and, and light, but uh it had other plans. Um <laughs> With a roar, she ran at the monster cordon using her new wing legs. This wasn't... What the fuck that was? This wasn't a fight. She had the... She had the... Um... Did you guys hear that? <laughs> Charborg is here. She had the chance. She had the opportunity to lose. That's the one I was thinking of. Espebinthia was determined to win this battle and defeat her friend Monster Corden. She ran at him with full force and slammed into his chest. Corden tried to grab hold of Espebinthia's neck with his hands, but she was too fast for him. Keep going. She grabbed hold of Corden's arm with her talons and pulled it towards her, tearing it off from its socket. Oh. 
Corden screamed in pain as he fell down to the ground, clutching at his severed limb. Keep going. You're doing great. Keep going. Corden rolled away from his Babinthia before jumping up onto the castle wall and leaping over the courtyard walls. He landed on top of the castle ramparts and began climbing the stairs. Come back here, you filthy monster. <laughs> Keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> Yelled Espabinthia as she chased after her former friend. Just as she reached the landing of the castle ramparts, Corden leaped off the rampart and landed next to her. He picked her up in his arms and wrapped his furry arms, arms around her. Uh oh, he's furry now too? Uh oh, wait, hold on. Let's start our own country called Monsterland, he said. No, we will never live in a world where monsters rule because they are disgusting, foul creatures that should just die already. <laughs> Keep going. You're doing great, AI. Keep going. We're, I'm, I'm off the training wheels. Let's go. Monsters are not meant to exist. They should either be dead or cured like me. What? Screams Babinthia. Nonsense. You're a freak. A hideous creature of nature who was born with the wrong kind of genes and needs to get over it. Needs to get over it. <laughs> what is going on? If you won't join me, then I'll have to hunt you down and kill you myself. Corden said as he began to climb back up the castle ramparts. There once was a young silver-colored oh. dragon named Espabinthia who was currently flying through the forest no. towards the... They cut away. Don't cut away. Go back. <laughs> we begin again. I I don't know why it does the, uh, this. I get that it's supposed to be like a chapter, but it's like falling back on like what it knows to be solid, right? You can delete that. All right, keep going. <gasps> Your mother was a werewolf. Spabinthia shouted out. Shut up, Espabinthia. Your voice doesn't mean anything anymore. Corden screamed as he continued his ascent of the ramparts. Okay. I'm invested. Ugh. Oh. There once was a small silver-colored dragon named Espabinthia who was flying through the forest towards the castle crabbing Capel. She had been told she needed Just to go to the castle to meet up with the older Charbo, sorcerer who stole the magic female of dragon from, from Spabinthia's cave shows up and said, Need a claw? As Babinthia looked at the old dragon and smiled. Thank you, Yella. Yella means you're welcome, and dragon added the old dragon. <laughs> there once was a young silver drake named as Babinthia who had Thank found you, her way back to the cave. And uh, Yella means you're welcome, and dragon. <laughs> added the old dragon. All right, we have to we have to remember that from now on. Yella means you're welcome, and dragon. <laughs> uh okay this has been fun um i i kind of want to like save well, the rest of this we'll do its own stream for but i think we could definitely make a whole stream out of novel ai stuff i think it would be neat if there's a way that we could have you guys also like help write it i mean i think it's faster when i just like you know am banging that out as we go um please save and post it what the hell post it where I'm going to name it, I'll, I'll call it Spabinthia the Dragon. Look, I admit it, you're better than me. Everyone's better than me. TC Zapper, thank you for the 10 months. Yala, Yala to you too. Um, 
We should do different themes with it. Yeah. Can we add lore in a channel and you can just copy paste it to add it? Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe that's the way we do it. We could make like a discord channel and, or like a prompt and chat can fill out backstory. And then we load up a story with all the backstory that was filled out, you know, like kind of like a rapid fire, uh, like storytelling session. I think that'd be really neat. I need to think about that a little more. You make it to choose your own adventure book where the chat picks your next action sometimes. Yeah, it's like maybe. What if it's like I'm running the story and I'm just like writing it as it comes. And then, you know, if we hit like a sub goal or, you know, at random points, kind of like in Skyrim, you know, like how there's the chaos mode where you guys could just like airdrop in spawns for me. Um, there would be like an event and someone would be able to write the next pro like line and I'd have to use that line and it would like swerve the story. And, and like my job is like trying to keep it on track. I'm like trying to, you know, keep us moving forward in like a, you know, cohesive way. But then you guys can be like, and then rocks fall and I, you know, and Sabinthia dies and I'm like, oh fuck. But then she finds the extra life, you know, <laughs> so I have to like try to get us back on track. Or pick certain chatters to play characters in the story. That's interesting too. The only problem is I think I'd be limited by how much um, I could get on the page. Because uh, I don't, I would need to copy paste constantly and probably correct, you know, messages if they're sent in. Oh, by the way, when I first te tested this, I made this story. I literally just said, once upon a time there was a goblin. And the eye said, who had a pet rat. The goblin and the rat were inseparable. And they lived together in a tiny hole under some bushes. One day while the goblin was out looking for food, he found a magical golden ring that Grand wished, wished to ever her wore it. So it was literally their, like, the automated reply. And then they made this title for him. <laughs> yeah, I was very impressed. It could be like the queen from Kenshi. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think it's like the Kenshi queen where uh, you guys are dropping in themes or even just straight up messages that I have to incorporate into the story, you know? Cool. All right. Let's, that's a stream I'm excited for. Um, need a claw. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that line. I think that was a good one. What else? What else do we have? Just having an AI dungeon script read with the gang voice and character sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, I don't know how to... I, I want to incorporate other people in it, too. That's kind of how we did before, right? We had, like, guests would write the next part of the story each time. The Age of Dragons 2. Long awaited. I, I like how dragons have been the main <laughs> component in both of our stories using AIs. And it's long shot, but you love more Space Station 13. I mean, I think that's more up to Tomato because he's the one that runs the server, but I definitely play Morphe if if it was working. Need to make a Monster Land series. What's that? Oh, Monster Land. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the country where monsters can be themselves. We could. I mean, that maybe that that is. Spabinthia the dragon is the is the prologue to Monster Land. Um. Be cool to see some fan art happen for novel AI. So that's the other thing that I really was curious about, but I don't know how the hell I'm gonna make it work. I I want I was wondering if there's a way to incorporate like AI art generation, you know, like the Dali project, um in an AI storytelling stream where we can like recreate scenes using the AI 
like processing, but I don't know if it would work for that because it's basically going to be like really weird images. And I don't have access to the new stuff from Dolly. Does an AI dungeon have a mode that makes images for you? I don't know. I'm not using AI dungeon right now. Apparently it's kind of gone downhill. So I was using this new thing, which is novel AI. Um, You do it for character descriptions. There's a dragon version of the aisle. It's called Day of Dragons. That's the thing Charborg was trying to get me to play. Um, news on Oblivion stream. I need to do a lot of modding again for that. I think if I could combine Oblivion with like some of the concepts we're talking about now, I would be really pumped for that. Either like chat prompted events or kind of direction. AI generated oblivion. Yeah, that might be tough though. Um, yeah, multiplayer Skyrim is a thing, but I don't know how stable a mod is. I tried it a few times. On July 8th, Skyrim Together Reborn releases. Uh oh, what does that mean? <laughs> Together Reborn? How has it got reborn again? Um, anyway. I mean, this has already been a pretty helpful stream for what I was hoping for, guys. Like, I just wanted more ideas and kind of hear um, different things you guys would be excited for. And I think this AI stuff was fun. What if you made AI dungeon write events for Divinity 2 campaign and made that campaign? Oh, that's interesting. I see what you're getting at. It's like using the DMing mode. Um to like bring the events the AI dungeon comes up with to life. If it was quicker to make, then that would be perfect. But that would be like a big project. Um, can use the AI art generator for the tokens. What is this AI art generator you're talking about? It, not Dolly, right? Because I, I don't think there's like a limited number of these they can really do. Um, let me see how effective it is. Dragon, fighting, Flash Golem. This would be for today's story. Are there other options besides Dolly? Because um, Dolly 2 is the one that is uh, ooh, public access soon. I don't know if I believe that. Yeah, I think I might have to wait to get access to that if that ever happens to make the story, the art part. 
Crayon. Um, dragon fighting a flesh golem. <laughs> okay. This is, uh, I guess, technically what the AI interpreted um, the battle uh, that we just described. Wow, pretty cool. That's Corden. And that's Spubinthia before the leg, leg uh, wings. What an age we live in, man. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll probably call it there. It wasn't going to be a very long stream, but, um, oh, wait. Yeah, this is even better, actually. We could, I could probably incorporate this. This is the uh, crayon. Look at these. Dragon fighting flesh golem. This feels this this feels like a an, an artist interpretation of what we just saw, you know, or what we just heard. What was that about VR earlier? Oh, I, I'm I'm hanging out with my friends offline in VR, but we're probably not we're not going to stream any of that. Um. Yeah, I'd like to do another VR stream though sometime. It's an oil painting left in the rain. I really, the dragon keeps ripping the head off the golem. <laughs> Um, actually, the dragon was silver after it leveled up from getting the magic ring of Porf, which was 30,000 experience. Ugh. Okay. Well. Thank you guys for chatting with me a bit. Um, it honestly did help, I think, my motivation and, like, hearing some of you guys brainstorm and... Um, Messing around with the AI stuff was neat. So, uh, Yala, Yala to you as well. That's uh, you're welcome in Dragon. Uh, let's see who we can we can raid with a, a Yala raid. I'll send you over to Lena. Go give uh, Lena a Yala raid and explain. Yala is you're welcome in in old in dragon. Um, we should all know this, but now you know as well. But yeah, Lane's playing old retro games, the Sega Genesis era. So that should be neat, right? Yep, Yala. <laughs> all right, take it easy, guys. I'll be back. If not tomorrow, then definitely on Monday. I'm gonna take some time to go through this list and uh, get some of them set up, and you know. Hopefully we'll get the plan going. So, yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good rest of your weekend. And I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.